Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Stored Switzerland. We're at VMworld 2015. One of the big things you're seeing at VMworld 2015 is lots of different types of flash, for example. We got server-side flash, we got 3D NAND, we got SLC, we got MLC, we got all this different flash technology, and of course we still have hard drives. And so part of the challenge is where do we put this data, but potentially the bigger challenge is how do we get this data moving between these different uh, types of storage. Data is essentially prisoned by these different silos of storage that we uh, have to deal with today. So to talk about that, I've asked Lance Smith, he's the CEO of Primary Data, That's right. to join us on the whiteboard. Lance, before we get started though, tell us a little bit about Primary Data. So you know, uh, uh, first that's a great observation. There's Thank this you. wide spectrum of storage types that are out there. In primary data, what we're focused on, first and foremost, is to get the right data in the right place at the right time. So there is this challenge of actually trying to marry up the storage demands for, for an application, right, or for a server itself. Right. We're focused on making sure that happens, and then the benefits are huge. You know, the issues that one runs into today, if you're on the storage management side, is you normally have to over-provision your infrastructure to ensure that you don't run into a problem. Right. Because when IT is informed of a problem, it's too late. Right. Yeah, they're yeah. not calling because everything's going great, right? That's right. Okay. Well, let's talk about it a little bit. Okay, so you know, what I want to do is I actually want to show what a, a typical infrastructure will look like. Okay. You know, one will have a, a lot of machines that are running uh, mission critical applications okay. or their background applications, right? So these are all different types of servers running uh, those apps. And then what traditionally happens in those environments, there's some set of storage that is you know, within the system, within the data center itself. Typically, there's some kind of front end. Could be a gateway, could be a sand array. This sort of connects them all up. Okay. And basically, what occurs is that all these different applications have to go to that single point. So you actually mentioned something that was in, important. This actually now turns out to be a silo of information, right? right silo sure. of data storage. And if you wanted to make use of different types of storage, for different reasons. For instance, if you're the application manager or the um, responsible for data management up at the top here, mm -hmm. quite frankly, you don't even want to worry about what that infrastructure looks like. You want to worry about what objectives I have to achieve with that application. Sure. How many transactions per second? How many simultaneous uh, users do I have to support dynamically? Then you have the other side of the coin. If I were to sort of draw a line here, what you'd see is the bottom side of this, and this is the storage managers that are worried about this infrastructure, okay? Mm -hmm. These storage managers have a limited budget, and they, have, they do have some choices, but if they're stuck in one single vendor's uh, solution, maybe it's a SAND, there could possibly be, you mentioned um, already flash in the forms of, of, uh, of SSDs. Sure. Could be 15K RPM drives or 10K RPM drives, and there's sort of natural tiering that would happen down here. Right. But that's it, the choice is over. Now the customer's saying, well look, I want to make use of clouds for object cheap and deep storage. Sure, yeah. But what if I also want to make use of maybe flash on a PCI Express card for the highest level performance? Mm -hmm. Now what do you do? Right. So what we've done at Primary Data, quite frankly, is that we've taken this storage and we've created uh, what we call a global data store. Okay. Okay? And from this point of view, what ends up happening is that we get to now um, cut the tie between an application's logical view of its data from its physical location. So we have a technology that so sits over on the side here, and it's what we call out of band. Okay. And this technology is a, is a, a, a metadata box that's running a number of, of engines. Uh, we call it a data sphere. Okay. And okay. so this is a dedicated piece of hardware in the environment? So it comes in two forms. Okay. It comes in the form of, v of a VM or okay. a dedicated appliance. We offer it in both forms because okay. our customers have come back to us and said, I want ease of deployment, mm -hmm. I want to uh, make it easy to qualify it, and I want to put it into my VM environment. Okay. And then there's other customers who says, I want the highest level of performance I can get. Right. So I want a dedicated appliance to get that job done. Okay. Here's where the magic begins. Okay. We've actually split that logical view from that physical view by doing something very important. We've introduced something that we call our control channel. And this is where we have all the metadata of files being retained. So all the information that we can gather about how a file's been used by an application. And then once we know that information, we can now best figure out by running uh, an analytics and objective engine on that metadata, determine what location, whether it's um, you know, PCI uh, Express-based flash, 
for performance, or if it's shared storage or the cloud, we can make that determination. Low cost, cheap and deep, low latency, high performance. And we can take those files and then we can start placing them when and where they're needed. So you guys are doing the analysis here. I don't have to, as an overburdened already storage manager, try to figure out that myself. That's right. Huh. Okay. When it comes to performance, by the way, we have we, we bring the bottom side of cost, the OPEX of running this type of environment, um, much, much lower. The top side of it, and when you have to go buy the capital equipment, here's what's very unique. The applications now get to natively talk to each one of these storage types, depending on if it's an object store, or maybe it's a block base, or it's maybe it's a file-based interface. So it could be a shared store that's NAS or SAN. Okay. It doesn't matter. This data path is high performance. We're not in the way. Okay. So we're what we call an out-of-band solution that's storage agnostic. Okay. So we can use every different type of storage, that whole spectrum that you listed at the beginning of the discussion, right. is important. And it gives the uh, IT organization their options. So let's have an example. Because okay. there's an easy way to describe this. From the data manager's perspective, if they want to ensure a level of performance, they would want to dictate an, an objective for high performance storage. But they don't need to know whether it's flash in the server or it's an all flash array that's sitting over on the side. Right. Okay. They, they just know what they need and they don't care they where it comes from. They just require this certain objective to be achieved. Okay. Then on the storage managed perspective, they see this objective requirement. They have their SLAs or their service level agreements to meet those objectives. Okay. So they deploy an infrastructure that allows them to accomplish that. Okay. Once that's being met, the application manager is happy. In the IT organization, here's the biggest bang for the buck that over-provision that normally occurs, mm -hmm. because IT's got to ensure that no problem will exist in their environment, sure. or they're throwing more equipment at it, which right. is a false economy, because at the end of the day, there is data that's very important to a business, has high value, and sure. there's data that's colder, that's less used over time, and we right. know that ratio. It's like 80-20, 80% 80 right. yeah, yeah. of it is cold, and that percentage has stayed like that for decades. It for seems decades, like. right? Yeah. So we need to make sure the 80% not important, maybe gets pushed off or demoted into cheaper storage. Right. And the 20% that is important, you promote it up into your faster stores. Sure. The IT organization now can get more use out of their existing equipment because okay. over-provisioning is pretty pervasive. It's two, three, four times that, uh, the amount of storage that's actually being used than what is actually idle. So now their budget just got bigger. And now we're actually delivering what's important. What is the uh, business objective for that application? It goes on, uh, on, on both sides of the coin. What if I have an app not so important? 30 days out of the, out of the month. One day a month it is. There's um, end of, end of month um, uh, you know, back in receipts and tallies sure. and inventory uh, um, activity that's happening. Mm -hmm. That one day a month you can promote the, the data up into your uh, expensive fast storage. When it's done, promote it back down. Some other application can use it. Now will your analytics identify that pattern for me? So that's exactly to... right. So wow. sitting okay. over on the side here is all that metadata. And okay. so we have analytics and policy engines that are going through and looking at what is the activity of all the data and based off of either what the, app, the, the, the application manager or the data manager wants to achieve over time or through activity and what cost, we can move the data where it needs to be. Huh. Now I want to point out. So you out, can show stuff to people that they don't even know is happening to their data, right? So that's the thing. We can we produce heat maps and we can show activity by what's happening with the application wow. and what's happening by the whole storage, right? Because we can look at the storage itself and take a look and see what files are active. And there may be a whole chunk of them that are too cold that from an IT perspective, they can still meet their service level objectives by uh, modifying their uh, service level agreements. Say, I'm gonna move this data over there. And, and if no one you know, is, is gonna need it for the next 30 days, because you can see those analytics, right. you can leave it on that tier. Now you keep using the word uh, files. That implies to me that you're granular below the volume level. I can make different decisions based on different types of data. Actually, based on the, you know what the requirements are, we can do full LUNs, okay. full volumes, directories, subdirectories down to a single file. So if you have wow, an application, okay. uh, let's use a database as an example. Cheapest way to make a database run faster. Cheapest, I said, right? The mm -hmm. lowest cost is take those files that have a lot of I/O activity outside of, let's say, the database. The database may be uh, want to remain in the shared storage so multiple applications can get to it. But let's take the uh, the more non-persistent temporary files. 
temp space, swap space, maybe uh, indexes and logs. You put those in Flash in the same server that, that the database is running, it's two to four times faster. Wow, okay, great. So, you know, in summary, what I'd like to say is that the technology we brought to today is based on something we call data virtualization. This technology is applicable in many ways, and what we've tried to do is ensure that we can take that data and put it in the right place at the right time, but using your existing uh, infrastructure. So you do not have to do a forklift to put these type of technologies in. We can adopt new storage and new storage types into the infrastructure and do so seamlessly. So what you're doing is really breaking sort of these uh, prisons, so to speak, or these silos, and doing it automatically so the storage administrator, doesn't, who doesn't have the time anymore to manage it, doesn't have to worry about it. That's right, and by the way, I should note, we're not a cache. That's just a over-provisioning technique that right. just keep putting more equipment at it. We put that data in the right place at the right time. Perfect. Thanks very much for joining us Thank today. you. Well, there you have it. You can break free of sort of these data prisons and silos and actually be able to move data at a very granular level and leverage all the different features that we have nowadays in the data center. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.